Pastor Olukoya was visited by a, a lady who said, my children don't get married. They can never get married. Listen, he said, where are the children? He prayed for the parents and went home. First night, the first child came back. Second child came back. Third child came back. Fourth, all divorced. Short space of time. He gave them just a book. He said, pray these prayers at night. You will see. He went. This lady went there and began to pray at night. The grandmother came and said, um, I, I heard you pray around three. Don't say those prayers. Go back to the original prayers you were praying. <laughs> the second day, she came back and said, you, you have repeated those prayers again. The lady said, Grandma, you know you, how your heart is far from me. How did you hear me there? She put her hands on the back and left. Following day, she came and said, you repeated those prayers again. Hey. Stop. Hey. Go back to what you used to do. Ah. The third day, she prayed. No one came to complain. She left. She came out, tried to see if grandma is okay, dead. The Bible says when King Usia died, yeah. I saw the Lord oh, yeah. high and lifted up yeah. with his train filling the room. Yeah. 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 What kind of thing is this? The great Idahosa lived just a few miles from the airport and he made it a point that he never catches his flight. Every time he would get there to the airport, and you arrive there, and the plane is already going. You say, I call back. The ushers are like, no, 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 we can go. We can try another day. He says, no, 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 this one that is flying will come back. And the same plane dissolve, dissolve, develops a, a fault. Right rounds comes and parks. And people are removed, and he arrives at the airport. He says, one, two, three, you are staying. Because I heard the plane is full. Come here, I will bless you, and you, you don't go. I have two visitors. We are going together. Hey. Original power. Yeah. No funny talk. Our Christianity is powerless. No one in town here can challenge anybody. Oh, fear. Men of God fear men of God. Men of God fear politicians. That's not the Bible I read. The Bible I read says politicians should fear men of God. That's the Bible I read. Christians should be feared. They should be coming here Asking, what can we do, man of God? What can we do? Yeah. They should see you at work and say, oh, what, should, what should we do? You are a Christian. You can fix this problem. No. We are bending all backward just to get them to like us. The witch in your family, the wizard in your family already knows you are powerless. I tell you of a story. My own mother, who gave birth to a prophet, was challenged by a witch at our own house. She put a line like this. No, not outside the compound, as they say in Nigeria. No, our own house, she did like this. Said, you will not cross. At our own house. The house is not yes. <laughs> Christianity, when you reduce it to its basic component, it should rival witchcraft. The average Christian, one small witch will whoop you. I tell you the truth, you don't want to hear. Because we are only for books and verses and arguments. Yet the apostle, when they were challenged, the apostles, when they were challenged, they will say, you will be blind for a season, not seeing the sun. New Testament, Ananias and Sapphira, you will die 
dead. Christians, uh, we should love our neighbors. Do you know why we say we should love our neighbors? It's not revelation. It's a lack of power. Because we don't have power, we cannot challenge darkness. These people are not taking us seriously. That's why people are not taking us seriously. Because there is no power. Anyone can say whatever they want at any given time. And nothing comes to them. Not the God of the Bible. You would argue, you would do something, and you will suffer that night. Here it is. I want you to see something. So the Bible has already given us that there are two realms that you can control, but they are controlled by the sun and the moon. And then there are other realms that are three levels. The heavens, the earth, and then under. So he added another realm that there is an underground. And if you look at the Bible, when it talks about underground, if you look in the book of Nahum, it talks about the gates of the rivers. You are seeing only the river, but the Bible is saying gets. And when you read it in the English context, you would think it's just talking about tributaries. And you read the original rendering in the original language, you realize they are actually spiritual guests to anything you see. You are too illiterate concerning the things of the Spirit. Hear me. I'm going to deal with something in a few minutes. Are you flowing? Or is it too deep now? Have you noticed the average Christians, Christian pastor, would be fighting another pastor? Nobody stands on the pulpit and discusses Islam. They are afraid to die. Because they know Muslims don't play. No one accuses Buddhists they are afraid they will die. But a pastor will fight another pastor. A prophet will fight another prophet. Just for your offering. And let me tell you this. If you keep buying, pastors keep selling. And a lot of it is hogwash. Because you are not mature in the spirit. You have not really studied this thing very well. Hear me well. Are you here? Let me show you something. Two, three. Let's read it. And God said, Let there be lights in the vault of the sky to separate the day from the night and let them serve as signs to mark sacred times. Oh, wait there. Do you notice? The sun is not meant for light only. This is why Satan needs to know what to do. That's why Sangomas and Jujumen and Voodoo men understand you can use the sun. Have you ever noticed why Satanists will say, the moon, the full moon, we are doing our rituals during that time. Let me give you this. These witches and wizards are not using what you think they are using. They can't attack you directly. All right. They have to worship a light. Okay. Okay, the light. Okay. They have to worship one of the greater lights. Okay. Verse 16. So you see it. God made two great lights, the sun and the moon. One to rule the day. Another one to rule the night. That means if you can't control the sun, you can't control what happens during the day. If you can't control the moon, you can't control what happens during the night. And most of your problems happen during the day. Because the night has been controlled by someone else. You, you have not seen nothing. Because your Christianity has been too westernized. It is not real anymore. It's a lie. It's a people just speaking in tongues and moving around. As a child of God, Christians are encouraged not to fear witches or their attacks because of the belief in the superiority of Jesus Christ and the protection offered by faith. The Bible acknowledges the reality of witchcraft as a form of demonic power but emphasizes that believers have authority over such powers through Christ. For instance, 1 John 4, 
4 states that the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world, reinforcing the idea that God's power surpasses any other. The fear of the Lord is considered a key to being immune to witchcraft, as it involves being more impressed with God than with any other power. This perspective encourages believers to stand firm in their faith and not give undue attention to witchcraft, which could create vulnerability. Additionally, scriptures like Isaiah 54, 17 assure believers that no weapon formed against you shall prosper, highlighting the protective nature of faith in God. Ultimately, Christians are encouraged to focus on the superiority of Jesus over all spiritual powers and to live in a way that reflects their faith and trust in God's protection.